Ooh, Abby of Abby Tales Pet Services here. For those of you who haven't seen my videos or uh, Q&As on Facebook, I am a dog trainer and I'm also a dog walker and pet sitter, but obviously online the focus is training, not walking or pet sitting, obviously. Um, and those of you who have uh, seen my previous videos, hello again. Um, my previous videos are focused on topics such as healing, separation anxiety, so preventing and dealing with it, um, recall, puppy biting, preparing for a walk, uh, gesture eating, multiple topics. But this video is about becoming and maintaining a leader of the pack. So the pack being your household. So if it's just you and your dog, then the pack is you and your dog. Um, if there's multiple humans, that's still the whole the whole pack so we're talking about the whole household here it is possible to achieve the um, position and maintain the position of leader without physically and or verbally dominating your dog so by verbally I mean shouting my approach focuses on positive reinforcement uh, it requires patience but it will lead to a happier calmer dog and household um, which is very important, obviously, for <laughs> mental health and happiness, as well as the dogs. Um, if you're happier, uh, the dog will be happier. Vice versa, if the dog's happier and calmer, you will be as well. So, what's involved? There are three main pillars that I'm going to be discussing. They are attention, food, and the walk. Now, there are multiple kind of subsections for each one and some of them overlap and, and relate to the other main sections but I've just put them out there so that they're easier to remember all right so in regards to attention everything at least to start with until your dog whether it be puppy or dog understands that you are leader and um, has respect for you as well as trust and vice versa that's very important then everything in regards to attention needs to be on your terms. So if your puppy or dog comes up to you and headbutts you to go under your arm to get some fuss, ignore. So that's a consequence of action, okay? You're doing something I don't want you to do, so I'm just, just going to ignore you. Not get off or shout at them or smack them. No, just ignore them. And if they don't listen to you, then you can use isolation as a consequence of action. Some will say time out. Um, it's completely up to you and I do actually have a video about that um, and any questions feel free to to message me but going back to everything needs to be on your terms if you want to give them attention amazing yes call them over to you so that's reinforcing the recall which is extremely important and needs to be practiced and, and, and actually introduced in the house and garden not on a walk so everything you want your dog to do on a walk needs to be introduced in the house and garden in a safe space. So everything is amplified on a walk. So if they're not listening to you in the house and garden, they are very likely to not listen to you on a walk. Right. So coming back to attention. <clears throat> if a dog insists on receiving attention, like I've already said, scratching, even nipping, um, you ignore them. This is also the same with if they're demanding food. So going on to meal times, I personally advise against set times for meal times, as this can lead to dogs demanding food and becoming rather fidgety, leading up to the time that they are, um, are usually fed. Uh, very intelligent like this. So my dogs, personally, are fed in the morning and the evening, twice a day because I want to. They're fully grown, but they have a little bit in the morning just to give them something, just to whet their appetite. And then their main meal is the evening. Now in the morning, if I've decided I'm gonna take them for a walk in the morning, then I will usually feed them after their walk. So they've got, there's no um, worry of an upset tummy, no colic or anything, because um, that can happen with, with a full tummy. Also with an empty stomach, they are more likely to listen to treats. It's not as um, important now because they understand what is needed. But especially when you start training your dog, um, they are more likely to listen to you when they're a little bit hungry. I don't mean starve your dog. But... Okay, so my dogs are usually fed in the morning between 6 and 10. Depends on what time I get up. 
it depends on whether I'm going to walk, be walking them, etc, etc. I decide and I try to make sure that it's not, it doesn't just happen to be the same time every day. So in a way it keeps them on their toes. So it's like, okay, well, mom's deciding when we are fed. And I don't have a full on breakfast in front of them if they haven't eaten, because I find that that's... <laughs> a little bit too tempting and not very nice but what I do do is I do a thing called gesture eating now the term gesture eating I um, picked up from um, studying with Jan Fennell who has been dubbed the dog listener very good reading um, now gesture eating she recommends doing it for only two weeks so the first two weeks of it introducing this approach I personally do it all the time I have two dogs they're very strong willed they're fabulous but I do it all the time anyway. It's just a small reminder in a positive way of I'm top, top dog. I'm leader, not you. So I'm just eating before you. And it's not like it's easy, ooh, look at this amazing bit of food. No, it's just I'm preparing you food. I'm going to eat when I've finished. So last mouthful you swallowed, finished. Then put the bowl down. Leave them to it. Then when they move away from their bowl, even if there is food in that bowl, they moved away from it. Take the bowl up, that means they've finished. And then you can um, use that as part of the, the next meal. The reason why it's not a good idea to leave food down so that dogs can go to and from it is because then they are in control of the food. They can decide exactly how much um, and exactly when they're going to eat. Now, one, it's a good idea to keep an eye on how much food um, a dog is consuming for their health, and whether they're underweight, overweight, whatever. Also, you don't want it to escalate to um, a dog starting to resource guard and resource guard their food. Um, so if you just eliminate that option, then that's fabulous. Also, and like I've said, it's a constant way of just reminding them I'm in charge here. Because dog, dogs are fabulous creatures, but some dogs more so than others, depending on their personality, will test you every now and again or constantly. You've got to be prepared for that. It doesn't mean they're bad, doesn't mean they're naughty. It means, are you worthy of this title of leader? If not, I might take it. Not necessarily with force, but it's like, well, okay, well. You're not stepping up to the plate here, I will. And that's how some dogs can become extremely territorial and protective, or even the complete different end of the spectrum and be very timid and nervous. So, we've gone on to gesture eating. <clears throat> now, oh, before we go on to walks, also before you put the bowl down, make sure the dog is calm. If the dog is not calm, wait. Wait it out. But I do have a video um, focusing primarily on gesture eating, so there's more information there in, in more depth, and you are also very welcome to message me or comment on here. Uh, just drop a thing below. Now, going on to the walk, third aspect. Before you even take your dog for a walk, you need to make sure your dog is prepared to go for a walk. So we'll use the um, example of a puppy here. You can use it also with a rescue dog, getting them used to the home, but we'll use it a puppy first. You've brought your puppy home, puppy can't go out yet, it's, uh, it's got to wait for its injections, etc, etc. They need to be desensitised to wearing a collar. If you want them to wear a collar all the time, okay. If you don't and you just have it for a walk, fab, it's completely up to you. But make sure that when you put the collar on, that doesn't immediately mean you're going to take them outside and take them for a walk. They need to understand that they go for a walk when you say so. Not, oh my God, you're putting the collar on. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to rush to the door, get under people's feet, potentially hurt myself. Some dogs can get so excited that they... They can, you know, bang themselves and whatever. We don't want that. We want them to be nice and calm. And it is possible with patients to do this by using um, positive reinforcement. Lots of patients. And keeping your heart rate down. Keep nice and calm. And if things are getting a little too much and you're getting really frustrated, then just stop doing what you're doing. Leave it for a little while, either the same day or the next day. We don't want frustration to come into training because that can negatively impact your dog as well as you. Okay? So... Get them used to the collar, also the lead and the harness. I advocate using a harness because you can put a long lead onto a harness that isn't pulling on their neck. So um, I always say this to my clients, my training and my walking clients, that um, 
putting a long lead onto a harness, the, there's a difference. So they, they can actually understand, all right, well, when the lead is uh, attached to my collar, always around my neck, if you're using a slip lead, which I do use, then I'm expected to heal. If the lead is on my harness, then I can go sniff. So if you're not ready to let them off the lead completely, putting them on the harness gives them a little bit, well, a lot more freedom. And you're still in control, you still got hold of them, but they can go and sniff and play with dogs and things. Yeah? Now, before you take them out, before um, you even bring the lead into the equation, some trainers will say use the lead to um, teach to heal. Uh, first, some trainers will say don't use the lead. I would personally suggest to start with don't use the lead. Um, so you want to get them to understand the concept of heal. Healing means be by my leg, whether I am walking or I'm not, right? We can, uh, I think some, some, will, some people will think that it just means if I'm walking, you have to stay by me. But actually what you want to install is heal means whatever I'm doing, you are by my leg. Now it can take some time to do that, um, but it is possible. Use treats, use toys, depending on what, what drives your dog. So get to know your puppy, get to know your rescue dog or your dog that you haven't even used this approach with yet. It is possible to teach dogs new tricks, as it were. It can just take a little longer. Um, so once you've taught the dog what the command heal means, and I do have a video specifically about heal on my channel, um, featuring my wonderful uh, Rotty Nelly, um, then you can introduce the lead because the lead is just a safety measure. One, it's a legal requirement on uh, pavements and roads, uh, public footpaths and things. <clears throat> Two, it is a security measure as well. But you always want to smile in the lead. So nice loose lead. You don't want any tension. Um, and I do discuss that in more detail in my heel video. Now, going on from that, once they understand what heel means, um, and they've got used to the lead, because we don't want to just introduce the collar, the lead and the harness, um, or just two of those, in one go at the start of the first walk. So they've never seen these objects before, and they're going to go out into the wide world. That can be overwhelming for some dogs. I mean, I think it would be overwhelming for people. I mean, it would be very strange if <laughs> you wanted to put a lead on a person anyway, but still. Um, so get them used to it. Teach everything you want a dog to do in the house and the garden before a walk. Like I've said, everything is amplified on a walk, both positive and negative. All right. Now, manners. When you're going to go out the door, the threshold, so the front door, back door, whatever, and in the house as well, but more importantly, when you're leaving the house, you need to go out that door first, not the dog. If the dog pulls right ahead of you, literally drags you out of the door almost, it doesn't matter what size, they can catch you off balance. Well, one that can cause injury, you could step on the dog, you could hurt yourself, again, depending on the size of the dog. Um, if they're not completely in control of themselves, as it were, using, demonstrating self-control and listening to you, then they can run out into the road, they can run out and come across a child, um, another dog, another person. We don't want that. So when they're coming out of the threshold, it's kind of up to you whether you want to set um, a habit of getting them to sit. Um, I would definitely advocate using weight command. Um, and heal also before you're moving out. But I am going to do a video about this also. I'm going to make a note. Um, so leaving the house. Because if they are calm and listening to you as you're leaving the threshold, they are way more likely to listen to you out on the walk. Like, why would they want to listen to you when you're healing or expecting them to heal out on a walk on the pavement if they know that they're still going to go in the direction that they want to go if they pull. Because you're just going to follow them because you want to go in that direction also. But if you teach them, no, if you pull, going through the threshold or out just healing anyway, we're going to turn around and reset, as it were. Then they will learn eventually, again, depending on the dog, it can take 
it can be really quick for them to grasp it or it can take a little while. Oh, okay, well, that's just annoying. I don't want to do that. And they won't. And that is, in my opinion, a much better way than yanking them because some will just ignore. Some can be so stubborn um, that they're like, okay, well, I'm garroting myself, no matter what um, lead you're using. Um, but I want to go this way and I know I'm going to get that way. So I'm just going to pull anyway. We don't want that because again, they are demonstrating leadership by doing that. They're leading the way. We don't want that um, for, the, for their happiness as well as ours and our sanity. So <laughs> if you get to the door, I would say put the lead on first. Um, if you get to the door and they pull, turn around, try it. I'd say a maximum of three times, and if they're not listening to you, take the lead off, kind of reset the situation, and wait for at least five minutes. Try again. Maximum three times, they're not listening to you, leave it. Leave it for a few hours, leave it till later on in the day, and just get them used to what is expected in that situation. They are not mind readers, we need to teach them, um, because this is a big scary world, it's not... The world where their their litter mates and their mom, it's they're in a completely different environment. So they need to understand how to interact with this environment, and we need to help them. Okay, so and that also works with if they're jumping up at you because they're so excited that you've pulled that you've brought the lead out. So you've got to desensitize. I do actually have a video. I'm pretty sure it's called a "Preparing for the Walk," that discusses that the desensitization towards the lead and the harness. Um, you're very welcome to message me and comment or comment below about that also. Now, yes, and again, I just want to reiterate that once your pup is actively engaged with you and listens to you in the house and the garden, then it's time to take them on for a walk. If they're not, then this can lead to problems, and, and we don't want that. So, bringing in the leave or leave it, depending on how you um, approach it. Um, wait, stay, recall and heal before you go for a walk. And you've got time to do that um, with pups um, before their uh, uh, injections. More important, the heal than the recall, really, um, at least to start with. But leave it and leave is very important and very useful because if they're picking something up on a walk that they shouldn't, or in the house also, You'll have shown them what is expected of them. Oh, I'm going to get a toy, I'm going to get praise or a treat if I leave. Um, so that will work if they're picking up litter or trying to get something nasty like a dead animal or something on the walk. But you can't just expect them to leave it. You have to put things in place so that they understand what's expected. Now, being in charge in general means that your dog will look to you to deal with um, everything. So perceived danger that can happen on a walk or it can happen in the house so we'll group that into attention um, to the house, the garden, outside of the home but instead of taking it upon themselves to act in a way that they think is correct so barking excessively, throwing themselves at the fence or at the door when the postman comes um, or even lunging when they're on the lead, the walk um, we have to show them that we are their protector, we are their leader, they look to us. We decide how to react to this perceived danger, this stimuli, right? So if we react in a calm, collected way, they are way less likely to, to just continue being um, ridiculously excited or stressed. So I do have a video. Um, that is entitled excessive barking, dealing with excessive barking, and that um, introduces the thank you method. I won't discuss that in too much detail here, because um, otherwise this video will be ridiculously long. But it's important to use that, because we don't want the dog to feel like they have to take on the role as leader. Some won't actually be able to deal with it. They've got it, they've taken it upon themselves to be leader, because no one else is. But it, it stresses them out so much that it can make them really, really um, nervous. It can even lead to, you know, them kind of shutting down in a way. Or some dogs can really enjoy it. 
Um, that doesn't make them bad dogs at all. You just have to show them, no, I am. Because it can lead to aggression or even fear of aggression. And we don't want that either. <laughs> so in order to see you as a leader, your dog has to trust and respect you and not think of you as their baby. Um, so going back to, this is linked to attention as well. Um, it's important that we're nice and calm once there's been the separation. So when we come back from um, leaving the room or we come back from leaving the house, we don't immediately go, oh, it's so nice to see you. I felt so guilty leaving you. No, whether you feel like that or not, that can make them think, oh my God, my baby was away and, and, and there is something to worry about. Ah, no. We just want them to think it's a completely normal thing to happen. I'm back now. It's cool. If they jump all over you, they get really excited, ignore. If they continue, use the isolation or timeout, if you want to call it that. Wait for them to calm down. Once they have, bring them back in. Ignore them. Once they've settled themselves down, without being told to do anything, so whether they've sat themselves down, lie down, lying down is better, but it's just something that keeps them grounded and they're like, okay, well, I'm just going to wait until I'm asked to do something, or if not, I'm just going to amuse myself doing whatever then you could call them over to you because the attention like i said before is on your terms there you're calling them over to you again this is reinforcing the recall as well and their name getting them used to their name and then it's like okay there is nothing to be worried about i'm home all is good cool now go about go about your business yeah so you'll see that it'll have a massive effect on how the dog sees you in general just by how you interact with them on a daily basis so if you're calm and collected, they're more likely to be calm and collected. And that will um, flow on to how they react to perceived danger um, on a walk, when you return from home, how they um, react when it's time to be fed, all sorts of things like that. Um, so yes, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Any questions, please feel free. Uh, to comment below or to get in touch with me directly and like I've said the videos that I've mentioned do discuss the certain topics in more detail also but it's just important that you establish yourself as leader and you maintain it and um, you earn it as a way you don't um, you don't abuse your power that's what i was looking for they need to learn to trust and respect you it's got to be earned you've got to show them that everything's okay if you want their respect respect and trust then you've got to earn theirs too and depending on the personality of the dog like i've said before they may every now and again or constantly challenge you for leadership and if they are then there's something you're missing so go back to those things. What am I doing in regards to attention? Attention in general and how I come um, back after a separation. What am I doing in regards to food? And what am I doing in regards to walks? Any questions, please feel free to contact me. So yes, that is becoming and maintaining the position of leader. Speak to you soon. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a look at the other videos and share and share a like if you'd like. See you later.